Hi there. So right now we're going to talk about chapter 24, which is alternating current, and we're going to start with 24.1, which is characteristics of alternating currents. Now you're probably already familiar with direct current, uh, but alternating current is the form. It's really interesting because alternating current is a form that energy comes into all our homes. It's the um, form that energy is produced in, and um, if you remember from electromagnetic induction, um, you will kind of see that it's just a more easy way to produce energy, and it's also a more uh, efficient way to transfer energy, but we'll get onto that later. But um, the interesting thing is most of our actually home, actual home devices use direct current, but we use electro, uh, alternating current to, uh, to produce and transfer it, and we kind of convert it back into direct current. So anyway, we're going to be kind of talking about what alternating current is and kind of trying to explain it. So if you remember, um, uh, direct current kind of looks like this. Um, here we go. And um, in the in my graphs, I'm gonna draw v slash i because the y-axis can stand for either the voltage or the current. It will have the same shape and it'll look exactly the same. And down here, I'll have time. Direct current kind of looks like that. It's very very simple. We have a constant voltage and a constant current going through time. Alternating current, on the other hand, looks like this. Um, the current and voltage is kind of is as the name suggests, alternating in a sine or do so fashion. Like that. Sorry, this is kind of badly drawn, but imagine the top peak is the same as the bottom peak. So, what we have to show and understand, right, so we'll go to these terms as they come along, but we have to deduce, hey, right, so we kind of have this understanding that this power goes up and down and up and down, and that's just because the, there's a, the current actually changes direction. So, if you imagine a circuit like that connected to um, an alternating current power supply, so we have a um, the current will start moving that way, and then it will stop, and it will start moving that way, and it will go back to moving that way. And the voltage will actually increase and then decrease until it's negative on the other side. Anyway, let's carry on. So, how do we um, kind of know what the, volta uh, the current is at any one point? Well, we have a very simple formula, and luckily for you, um, it might seem quite similar. So, the current at any time is equal to the peak current. The peak current is basically... Um, in a in a in a in the wave, you will have these maximum values. So this value here is I zero or the peak value, and um, it's I zero sine omega t. The voltage at any point, uh, voltage at time t and I current at time t is equal to the voltage zero um, sine omega t. So. Um, this is basically because they vary in a sine of function, a sine of way, and this is how we mathematically represent that. Um, because um, sine um, varies between 1 and 0 in this fashion, and it uh, kind of manipulates the peak value here. Um, but you might be see wondering, what is omega? Omega is really just um, a way of describing the frequency. It really is a frequency, but it's a frequency times 2 pi. Because when you times it by 2 pi, it puts it in kind of a form that um, the sine function will understand. Because sine kind of works in the way of 2 pi. So omega is just that. And if you make, uh, if you remember, uh, f f uh, sorry, that's uh, f frequency there. Frequency there, and um, frequency is equal to one over time, one over period. So um, one over period, or uh, two pi over period is also equal to omega, and that's that's all it is really. It's just putting the um, frequency of of this alternating current into a way that sine can understand. So this is a very very simple formula, and I think it's quite self-explanatory. So but we've kind of explained, that there's one of our definitions knocked off. The peak voltage and the peak current is just the uh, highest value that the voltage or current will reach. And remember, positive and negative values of voltage and current really just mean the direction that it's moving in. Um, in this case, for, for semi-vector quantities, you could kind of consider them as that, but um, yeah. So um, anyway, moving onwards, uh, what is the power of a circuit like this? Um, you have to... Um, be, it, uh, the alternating currents have a, a few interesting mathematical properties, which we're about to cover. So, um, pretend that uh, I'm just going to always be drawing one of these. Uh, v or I and time. So, what is power? We know power equals I squared R, or it also equals uh, V squared over R. I'm going to do this on both sides. Um, okay, so I squared R. 
Um, but we have our equation now. What is I equal? Because it's not, we can't take a peak voltage because the power isn't peaked out. The power changes. It goes more powerful, less powerful, more powerful. So um, it's actually this um, thing here. It's for I0 squared because we're taking our sine function again. Sine um, omega t squared. So this is our value here times R, obviously. So that's I squared, and V is the same thing um, over here equals V0 squared sine squared omega t over r. So it's the same thing here again. Um, but what you have to realize is, um, so there's, there's, our, there's our value for power at any point. But we don't really want to know what the power is here, what the power is there, what the power is there. What's more useful is what the average power is, because that's what we need to des um, design our appliances off, isn't it? Um, when we're making a microwave, we want to know what the average power of the microwave is over time. So what is the average power? If, well, if you look at this um, graph here, if you look at the graph, if we look at our component here, if power is equal to um, I0 squared sine omega t squared uh, R, well, if you look at sine omega t, any sine squared, any sine squared wave, the average value of a sine squared wave, uh, the sine squared wave it kind of looks like this. It's kind of a sine wave that everything's become positive because squared values are always positive. So, the, because it alternates between 0 and 1 still, 0 and 1, the average value of sine squared will always be half. So, it doesn't really matter. This is just the time function of the sine. The sine always has a kind of set value. It's just the time function alters. So, the value of sine... Uh, the, if, we do this, if we take this as the average power, sine squared omega t becomes half. So what is, and then it becomes um, I0 squared R. Because I mean I0 squared is just a constant and R is also just a constant. So that's what the average current is and if you, as you can imagine um, the average, uh, it, you can look at it from either way because it's all the same thing. But then um, we have to take a I0 squared, what is I0 squared? It's for peak value squared. But does that mean that alternating current with a peak value of, say, 27 volts, uh, 27 volts, is the same as DC as 27 volts? Well, let's take a look. If that was 27 volts, and then that's a DC value of equivalent voltage, you can kind of see that this is not the same power, right? This does not provide the same power. So we have this kind of idea called the root mean square value, which is the number which provides the same power as an equivalent DC voltage. So alternating current, even though alternating current might, might be 27 volts, because it varies so much, it doesn't provide an absolute. It doesn't provide 27 volts worth of power all the time. So we have a root mean square value. You'll be see what soon see why this is a root mean square value. Now, just because it alternates up and down like this doesn't mean that the actual effective power is half. Because remember, the power is dependent on half uh, v zero squared. This squared is very, very important. If you can imagine a value, uh, if you just draw a function of y equals x squared, you'll see it looks like like that. It's exponentially increasing. So, as you increase more, you'll see that uh, it's obviously. Uh, half half of a y-axis is not half of an x-axis because look at that. We can have a small change in y-axis or a small change in v, and that will produce a huge change in the power. So um, this is because of um, how exponentials and squared values work, because you're timesing by yourself. So what is the equivalent power? Well, let's take a look at this equation here. Uh, I zero equals v equals so v squared zero squared. So v zero. Uh, squared, um, the average value of v0, uh, the average value of v squared will be equal to um, half of a v0 squared. And hold on, didn't I just say it, it's not half? No, I said it wasn't half of v. It's half of v squared. And that's a really important uh, idea here. So if this is the average value of v0 squared, um, what is the average value of v? The average value of v is very simple. We just square root it to get rid of that. And if we square root this entire side, square root of v0 squared over 2 
and you should know that this one cancels out and this becomes root 2. So the average value of v, or the effective value of v, mathematically proven, is v0 over root 2. And that is the RMS value. Um, dividing by root 2 is the same as times by 0 0.707 if you want an approximation. So that's really what we're saying. Um, and I'm going to prove that to you in just a second. Here we go. Okay, so um, say pretend we have uh, alternating current where the voltage is 4 and the current is 2, which would give us a resistance of 2 ohms also. So that's 2 ohms, 2 amperes, and 2 volts. Okay, so what do we say our power was? Our average power will be equal to... Um, our peak power will be 8, but we don't know what our average power will be equal to. Our average power will be equal to half I0 squared R, and also equal to half V0 squared R. So that would be either equal to half I0 is 1 squared over 2, uh, sorry, 1 squared times 2, which would equal to 2. So our average power is either... Sorry, 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So that would be equal to 4, not 2. So our average power is obviously 4. And that's the same if you use either equation. Now what's our RMS value? So what's 2 divided by root 2? I'm just going to go over here, and you can do this yourself if you don't believe me. But 0 0.707 times 2 is equal to 1.41. So over here, the RMS equals 1.414 RMS, the root moon squared current. And the RMS voltage here is just double that, which would be 2.8, equal to 2.8. Now what is... These this 2.8 times 1.141 um, times 1.414, you will find it equals, interesting enough, 3.998. And 3.998 is pretty damn close to 4. So you can see that these effective values um, of voltage and current actually do give the same power as our average power formula here. So you can kind of see that this is the equivalent DC voltage of um, the 4 volt AC. So 4 divided by root 2 equals 2.82. So 2.82 DC current with 1.414 current will produce the same um, power as this AC current of 4 volts and 2 amperes. And interesting enough, a uh, resistance ratio still exists between this. So that's just a bit of interesting um, thing there. So now you understand what RMS is, you understand what peak value is, you understand how to um, deduce the mean power and also how to um, do the sinusoidal equation to get the power or voltage, uh, the voltage or current or power at any time. So that wasn't so difficult. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and it gets a little bit harder down the road, but here's a basic introduction to um, alternating currents. Hope you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe if you like and, like and want to see more. Thank you.